Hey there, Amy394. So on Monday, one of the things that I forgot to post here for all of you is a kind of cheat sheet for how we go through setting up that button to run a script to go ahead and open our control panel. So we talked about wanting to have that happen and wanting to be able to, from this container right here, to be able to uh, hit this view command and have it open up the control panel for us without us needing to be actually inside of this. So I wanted to take some time to run through how that works um, because I didn't have a chance to record that for us yet. Okay, so let's start by diving here into our visuals container. So I've got a simple setup here. I'm just using a picture. Um, so ignore that part of it. What's more important is that I'm going to try and replicate this uh, kind of structure, the hierarchy of how this works, right? So I've got a control container over here. I've got our visuals container here. I've got to go inside the visuals container. This is where you're making all of the exciting visual stuff happen inside of your network. And this is the one place where I want you to build a single button. You're only adding a single button to this actual, to this container. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a button in here. And we'll see that when we zoom out, that our button appears in the bottom left-hand corner. Great. And um, the first thing that we talked about, well, let's get the script running first. And once we get the script running, we'll talk about the kind of aesthetics of this button. So to get the script running, we're going to dive inside of our button here. And we're going to add, we're going to add a panel execute dat. And that again is on the dat page and it's panel, oops, panel execute. So this is set up to watch for an event that happens inside of our panel, right? It's our good old handy friend, the panel chop. So we're looking for all of the events that might come out of our panel. And we're going to use these events, or our choice of these events, to run a script. So in, in our case, what we're doing, if we look a little more closely at the panel execute dat, is we can see that we're looking for the panel value called state. Perfect. Because it happens to be that state is, oops, let's find this guy down here. State is the action of it being turned on. Great. Let's go ahead and let's fix one other thing before we get too far along here. Let's make sure that our button is set to momentary. And that's on the common page of the button, or excuse me, that's on the button page of the button. And momentary is how we want this set. So that means that it just sends out a single signal. It doesn't stay toggled on. It just kind of fires off once. Excellent. If we were to take a look at that button again, we can see that as soon as I click on this, that uh, changes this state to one. And that's when I want to run this script, right? So looking again closely at this panel execute dat, I want to uh, execute this script based on the state of the panel. And specifically when it goes from off to on, when it changes from zero to one, that's when I want this script to run. Now, if we take a closer look here at what's inside of our panel execute dat, we can see that there are a bunch of functions that are defined for us. So in here, there's a function for off to on, for while on, for on to off, while it's off, and value change. Okay, well, what's that about? So these functions correspond to these parameters over here. And in order for our panel execute dat to work properly, we need to make sure that the script that we write is um, not only it happens in the right kind of change, right, from the off to on position, while it's on, etc. Um, but we also need to make sure that the corresponding toggle is set. In our case, we're already set up for going from off to on. And that means that the script that we write needs to happen right here in this uh, function. So if, we're, if you're new to the, kind of the idea of functions, part of what's happening here is we're setting up a, a set of operations that are going to happen at a particular event. Right? And in this case, it's when we go from off to on. So that means that we're going to write all of the things that we want to know. Right? We're going to write all of the instructions for a touch designer here inside of this function. So I need to make a couple, I'm going to add a couple returns here. Python is white space, white space dependent, so that means that we need to be at the right tab level, right? So I need to be here tabbed in one. 
and I can't have any extra spaces, so I need to make sure that I'm only one tab over. If I have an extra space in here, this is going to mess up my script, so you need to be exactly one tab over. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define a variable, and I want to call this thing control. Now I'm using this because it's just it's good habit to think about how you're uh, organizing your functions and how you're kind of making it easier for you to read the thing that you're writing, right? So control, the thing that's uh, called control, is going to correspond to our actual controller, right? So let's, what do I mean by that? Let's back out here a little bit. So if we zoom out one level, and we zoom out two levels, we can see that this is our control. Uh, container, right? That's the thing that I want to call control over here. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Well, remember that we can reference things um, with our dot dot notation, right? Oops. So if I say dot dot slash, that means go up one level, okay? So I could look for something up here. If I want to reference an operator that's up two levels, right, if I want to go out another level, then I need another dot dot slash. So what that's doing is that's using a relative pathway to say the thing that I'm looking for, the operator that I'm looking for, is up one level, is up two levels, and now I can put the name in here, mrctrl. Right? So that's the thing I want. And again, I know I'm belaboring this point, but just to try and help clarify here. I want the operator that is up one, two levels, called mrctrl. And I want to change that thing. I want to define it for my script as control. Excellent. All right. Now, with that uh, already done here, I would like to do the following script, or I'd like to execute the following action, right? I want CTRL, and I want to open, oh my, I want to open the viewer, right? And I've got, I need two parentheses, excellent. Bada bing, bada boom, and click out of here. It should be that if I hit this button, sure enough, my viewer opens up. So let's take one second here and let's look at, uh, let's kind of pull this script apart even a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out, right? Commenting out means that I can go ahead and disable a portion of my code. So I'm going to comment, comment out this section uh, where we define control. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to comment out this section also. Okay, so now I'm going to click this button and nothing's going to happen. Perfect. But let's look at another way that we could write this same script. Right? So what I could have done is I could have said, right, when this button goes from the off to on position, I want you to find the operator that is not up one level, but of two levels call, called mrctrl. And then I would like you to open viewer. So please do that whenever this changes. That does the same exact thing. So why on earth did I have you write it this way? Well, part of the reason I had you write it that way is that in many cases, this can become uh, not only mm, cumbersome, but it can become really long-winded. So in our example, in this particular network, uh, this is a fairly simple relative path. But you might have a situation where the thing that you're referencing has a very long operator reference. In addition to having a long operator reference, you might have a much more complicated action that you'd like to ask it to do. So for those reasons, we can simplify all of that by instead defining this operator, right? This thing right here, this guy, I want to call it CTRL, control. And then 
I want to take advantage of the fact that I've named it control and I want to run open viewer. And I can do that the same way that we've done all, you know, lots of the other things that we've done with this uh, dot notation. Right? Both of these things uh, accomplish the same action. So I'm just having us do it in a way uh, that practices good programming for how we can organize things later. Because as we start to build more and more complicated things, it will be important that you have some kind of consistent methodology in terms of thinking about how you're writing this. Okay, so that's one. That's our script business. Bang, done, out of the way. Okay, what's the next thing I want us to think about doing? The next thing that I wanted us to think about was I want this button to have, well, I want this button not to show up all the time. That's one thing that I want it to do. And we can see that if we go to the button and on the panel page, it's got this lovely opacity feature, right? So we can control the opacity. Well, how could I control the opacity without actually having uh, or, you know, what's an interesting way that I can control the opacity? That's what I want us to think about. So we've learned in other uh, examples that we can use a filter, right? We can use a filter chop to smooth out or to, uh, yeah, to smooth out, to ease, to create an ease in, ease out look for different um, operations, right? So in our case, uh, we can see, actually, let's disconnect this, because what I really want to do is I want a new select. So I'm going to grab a new select here, and in this select, I want to grab from this guy, right? That's how a select works. I want rollover. So I would like to ask for just rollover. Now. I typed it in here. You could also just select it from the drop-down menu. Either one of those would work just fine. And then from there, I want to get, I want to smooth that out a little bit. I want to make a nice kind of like ease in, ease out look for it. Yeah? If we were to look at this, and you don't have to copy this at all. This is just a kind of example, right? Just to look more closely at what's going on here. If we look at just a raw signal, right? We can see that it's Hard on, hard off. Bing, bang, bing, bang. Great. If we look at that in comparison to the filtered signal, we can see that the filtered signal has got a nice ease in and a nice ease out. Oh, yeah. See, that's, a, that's what I want. So let's now think about how we can use this in referencing this particular uh, channel, right? I want to use this to drive the opacity over here. So let's go up one level, let's take a closer look at our button, and let's write a little expression for uh, our opacity parameter to rely on that. Alright, so I'm going to look for an operator that happens to be inside of this container called filter1, and out of filter1 I would like the channel called rollover. Great, and our button disappeared. Well, that's because now it's waiting for the mouse to roll over the top of it, and that's when it shows up. And as soon as I move the mouse off of it, it goes away. I love that. This means that if we were to look at this operator, right, so let's view it. Now my button shows up. I click on my button, my control panel shows up. Love it. I can dismiss my control panel, and that button has stayed gone. It only shows up when I mouse over the top of it. Now, if we wanted to have a different kind of animation, right? If we wanted to think about another way that we could do that, we could bypass the use of a filter altogether. We might instead use a lag chop. Some of you played with the lag chop already. So let's look at how the lag chop compares. So I'll go ahead and connect my filter and I'm going to connect my lag. And we'll take a closer look at this. And we can see that, okay, they've both got ease in, right? They both ease in in the front, but the lag, which is that yellow channel, drops off very quickly. 
right? We can see that there's a, let's pause our timeline here. So we can see these have a slightly different shape, right? So filter smooths the front, you know, whoosh, smooth in the front here, smooth at the top, smooth on both sides, and lag has got this nice smoothing of the curve here and a smoothing of the curve down here. But it starts hard and it drops off hard. We can control all of those things, right, by uh, adjusting how the lag um, kind of method works here. And depending on what you want your button to look like, what you want this change in animation, the kind of quality that you want it to have, you might want to choose, a, uh, you might make a choice about which one of those particular uh, operators that you use. All right, lag one. So how does that look, right? Because really it's about what does it look like? So it's got a much more aggressive start and kind of eases. It has got a, a gentle finish on the top of it, an aggressive start again, and a gentle ending. So this is really about, this is a choice that you get to make. I'm happy if you use either one. In this particular case, I think I like filter more just because it feels really gentle. Um, and for whatever reason, I'm digging that. Great. If you're not digging that, cool. Okay, so one more time, what we've got here is we've got to look at, with our button, we wrote a little script over here that allows us to open up the viewer for another operator, right? To open up the viewer for our control container that lives out here. And we also added a button, and in the button, added either a filter or a lag. You can add either one of those. And then we wrote a little simple expression to be able to reference that and use that to drive the opacity of the button itself. So that when we're here, looking at the container, it only, it kind of gently rolls in and when our mouse isn't on it, it disappears. And we're thinking about this in the specific context of uh, how we might use something in an installation situation, right? So you want some control panel that an operator can pull up to make changes if some changes need to be made. But that the secret ingredient or the kind of secret that you have a control panel is hidden from the majority of people that work with the installation or view the installation. All right. I hope that helps, guys. And I can't wait to see you guys in class tomorrow.